Hey all here OS Reviews, you're watching our revisited review of the Samsung Galaxy S4 here in 2019. This is a phone that was released in 2013, making it around 6 years old, believe it or not. Time really does fly. So one of the reasons why you may want to consider the S4 still would definitely be its price. You can find one on Amazon or eBay for around $50 in pretty good condition, and in my opinion, it's also the oldest Samsung Galaxy flagship line of phones that I would personally still consider picking up, and that's because the older Samsung Galaxy S3 can be found for a similar used price, but is a pretty significant leap compared to the S4 when it comes to some of the hardware elements, which do make a difference now six years later in terms of daily performance. Revisiting the design first, the S4 still has a very classic overall look. The chins have been dramatically reduced compared to the older aforementioned Galaxy S3 three as you can see there and retains the same dimensions overall for the body despite packing a larger for the time 5 inch display. A 5 inch screen by the way is compact here in 2019 but definitely still not small. It's the same size as many of the Google Pixel phones and if you have smaller hands or if you want a one handed device still makes it very comfortable to hold. And that remains true even if you compare against newer Samsung Galaxy phones like the Galaxy S6 here, which has a ever so slightly larger display by 0.1 or 0.2 inches. Not really noticeable, but the Samsung Galaxy S6 is much larger in terms of the chin on the bottom and on the top. So actually the S4's design and footprint makes it look still relatively modern. Otherwise, the 5-inch Super AMOLED display has a full HD 1080p resolution, which is still great here in 2019. Very vivid with punchy and saturated looking colors and remains one of the better displays you'll find for a low cost phone. On the bottom here we have a home button and we also have capacitive touch sensitive keys for back as well as opening up the menu. Now this phone does not have a fingerprint scanner. To get that feature you have to turn to the newer Galaxy S5 but the S5 is also a bit more expensive than the S4 if you're looking at a used model. About 30% more expensive based on my current browsing on Amazon and eBay. So again this really is a super budget phone. Now on the sides here we do have a very tapered looking design. This was Back in the days where Samsung's devices were still being made completely out of plastic, the side features a dedicated volume rocker, the top features a standard 3.5mm headphone jack, always a good reason to pick up an older phone, and there's also an infrared blaster for controlling your TV. On the rear you'll find access to a 13 megapixel autofocus camera with an LED flash. The quality of the camera is definitely not as good as the latest generation flagships anymore, but it's significantly better than the previous Galaxy S3's 8 megapixel camera. So so that's another modernized touch. Now the back cover of the S4 can be removed. Doing so grants access to the SIM card slot, expanding the built-in storage. By the way, the phone came with 32 gigs as the base model, and there's also the loudspeaker on the rear. Overall though, I'd say the design of the S4 has held up significantly better than I expected. And up against other phones, even released after it, you can just notice how small really the chins are. Uh, so even though it doesn't have a fingerprint scanner built on in, it really is one of the more compact 5-inch phones that have been released. Other internal specifications include 2 gigabytes of built-in RAM along with a quad-core processor. It's the Qualcomm Snapdragon 600. The same processor found on the original first-generation HTC One. However, the international version of the S4 came with an Exynos octa-core processor, one of the first 8-core processors on a phone at the time, and again combined with 2GB of RAM still ensures a decent experience. It's no longer going to be lightning fast, but as a budget phone actually is very much up to par. Now the phone can be upgraded to Android 5.0 Lollipop, which is what you're seeing in front of you right now, but uh, it's definitely a bit different from the latest Android 8.0 Oreo skin that we now see as part of Samsung experience. Back then it was still called Touch Wiz. With that being said, all of the core features that you would want to access can definitely still be found. And as usual, Samsung is using the kitchen sink approach that is giving you tons of small features, some which are useful, some which you may not you know, use quite as much, but still is interesting to look at. One of those tricks, by the way, is called Air View. This was a feature that was retained on the Galaxy S5, but the S6 actually removed, and even in today's newest Galaxy flagship phones no longer have. So what Air View allows us to do is hover our fingers over the screen without actually touching it in order to give us contextual information. 
The idea is similar to Apple's Force Touch, which came out later, but instead of physically pressing down with different amounts of pressure, you simply need to hover. I'm not touching the display, but just hovering on top of it, you'll be able to see the uh, kind of air bubble up here, and I get a magnified view of this photo. Same thing goes with uh, kind of other elements. If I was in the web browser, for example, I could also view a quick preview of the page, for instance. And then other neat software tricks that you can access include keeping the phone's display on whenever you're looking at it. It's simply using the camera, the front-facing camera, to track your eyes. Also, a neat trick was called Air Gesture, which again uses the sensor on the top to allow you to wave your hands over the display. And here's a quick demo of that. I can wave to the left, wave to the right. Not going to be the most practical thing to use on a daily environment, but as a quick feature to show with friends and family, it is something that's pretty interesting. Now, when it comes to navigation using the phone, the biggest difference now is, of course, Android has reshuffled some of its controls. Now, long holding on the home key should trigger Google Assistant, but instead on Android 5.0, it still launches into the multitasking drawer. Now let's talk about the camera. That is one area where smartphones have gotten progressively better upon each generation. It's definitely no longer a top-of-the-line camera, but uh, for a budget device, it still works all right. Now focus is a little bit slower than current generation phones. Snapping an image can also be a little bit sluggish by today's standards, especially if you're capturing images using the HDR mode. It just takes a few seconds longer to process the photo before you can take a new image. As a quick demo of that, I can snap the photo and you can see it needs to physically process on the screen before you can capture your next image instead of doing that behind the scenes. Now the built-in application from Samsung though is not shabby. It gives you lots of features. The mode key here gives us lots of different scenes to select from, whether that's an erase key, I can erase certain elements from the shot, panorama, sports, night mode, uh, auto mode, along with other effects that you can do. However, it does surprisingly good from a camera that's again almost six years old. Uh, the skies here are actually capture really well in terms of details and colors, and for the most part I'm still fairly impressed considering the age of this uh, phone. Now as aforementioned, TouchWiz is a very thick skin on top of Android, and with the kitchen sink approach, one downside is you get a lot of bloatware and applications from Samsung from your carrier which are installed on the S4. The good news is you can definitely uninstall these apps if you don't want to see them there, but uh, there is quite a lot of content going on. You can also install your own launcher, such as Nova Launcher for instance, if you do want a much cleaner uh, software skin. Takeaway is that the display quality, again, is very good, so it gives us very punchy looking colors, especially with these inky blacks due to its AMOLED nature, and that makes watching back videos actually still very enjoyable, even though the screen size is compact. And of course, keeping up with the contents, you can see how scrubbing between different parts of the video still is fairly smooth, and uh, overall loading speeds are still very good. Now the audio quality is definitely not the forte of the Galaxy uh, S4 nor I would say the Galaxy line in general. The single speaker on the back can get easily muffled, but it does get quite loud. Otherwise, if we take a quick look at its web browsing performance, here's what the keyboard looks like, by the way. It's a little bit outdated, but still works all right and does support swipe as well. The page is taking a little longer than, say, on a current generation smartphone to render, but it still is very smooth when it comes to scrolling, and this is a pretty complex site. So I'd say that the overall experience is definitely usable. It still is a very impressive browsing experience, especially with these super saturated looking colors and dark backgrounds. It just really uh, animates and uh, kind of brings home how nice the display quality here is. Otherwise, the Snapdragon 600 doesn't really have problems in terms of thermal throttling, for instance, so the phone does get slightly warm on the rear towards the camera side, but uh, as a whole never gets uncomfortable even if you're using it for prolonged periods of time. Now the final thing to really talk about here would be performance with third-party applications that you'll find on the Play Store. For example, games. I would say that if you're downloading simpler titles like Black, like Stack, other 2D type animations, it definitely still holds its own without any issues. So as we can see here, loading between different levels of the game still is very much a impressive and uh, still smooth experience. But if you are trying to load up heavier games and titles, for instance, Asphalt 9, or if you are using PUBG, you definitely notice a bit more of a delay uh, between some of its uh, frames as well as loading speeds. Overall though, you can see for the majority of applications, especially simpler titles, I would say the phone handles without too many problems. So that's more or less it as far as our revisited look at the Samsung Galaxy S4 here in 2019. Now over six years later, I would say that the S4 has attributes which are ahead of its time. For example, it's relatively small bezels for a phone from six years ago compared to the S3 and even the S6. It also has a extremely 
gorgeous display, which at full HD resolution being Super AMOLED still holds up surprisingly well all these years later for viewing back content and interacting with media with. When it comes to general navigation, reading back emails, light web browsing, and very light gaming, it still handles without any issues. And uh, all in all, I would say if you're just using it as a light smartphone, making occasional phone calls, doing some quick, again, web browsing, and uh, interacting with media still can be a great choice to consider if you are light on cash. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews that's been our revisited look at the Samsung Galaxy S4 here in 2000.